Hi guys. Yes, yeah, so today we are going to be talking on the lumbar vertebrae, which is a part or a bone of the abdomen. Other bones include the lower ribs, the lumbar vertebrae itself, the sacrum bone, the coccyx, which is attached to the sacrum, and the hip bones, which is bilateral or in two. Our lumbar vertebrae, as you can see, the first thing to do when we see a bone is to identify what bone it is. If it, if it exists in two, it is very good to specifically identify whether it is the right side or the left side. So that is by the way. Now, lumbar vertebrae is just a single bone, like it does not exist in two in the body, it is not bilateral. However, it is more than one, it is five. Yes. So there are five lumbar vertebrae, and all of them have similar things in common. Amongst those five, there are four typical, four typical, one atypical. So the first, second, third, and fourth lumbar vertebrae are typical vertebrae, or typical lumbar vertebrae. While the fifth lumbar vertebrae is an atypical lumbar vertebrae. They just have a little distinguishing features that I'm going to mention but before we get to that i just want to mention a ge the general characteristics of all the lumbar vertebrae so this include the massive reniform body or bean shaped body as you can see that the body is bean shaped as compared to the thoracic vertebrae that is heart shaped right so this lumbar vertebrae is bean shaped or reniform or kidney shaped there is absence of coastal facet on the body compared to our thoracic vertebrae that has coastal facet on the body on both sides. The lumbar vertebrae do not have any coastal facet, right? There is absence of foramina in the transverse process. That transverse foramen is absent in the transverse process. You would pardon me because this part has cut off. So there is absence of foramina in the transverse process. And that's the typical characteristics of the cervical vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae has transverse foramina in the transverse process. There is also a thick quadrangular spinous process. So the spinous process is rather thick and quadrangular. Other characteristics, you have the diameter of the body. The anterior posterior diameter is shorter than the transverse diameter. So anterior posterior diameter is shorter than the transverse diameter or simply put the transverse diameter is longer than the anterior posterior diameter. Another characteristic that says the body size increases from the first vertebrae to the last. It increases as we are going from the first to the fifth. The body of the lumbar vertebrae keeps increasing, right? Making the fifth lumbar vertebrae having the largest body and the first one having the smallest amongst all the five lumbar vertebrae. Then we have the length of the anterior part is slightly longer than the posterior parts. So this anterior part, the length of it is longer than the length of the posterior part. And this accounts for the curvature of the lumbar vertebrae, the forward curvature or secondary curvature of the lumbar vertebrae. All the vertebral colloid is curved. The cervical vertebrae has a curvature similar to that of lumbar, and that is also secondary. Our thoracic vertebrae and sacral and coccyx, which is together, have a curvature that is similar to each other, which is primary curvature. So the lumbar vertebrae curves forward, and it is what? Secondary curvature. The structures we have on our vertebrae, the characteristic feature we can see on every of our lumbar vertebrae, we have a massive reniform body, as I've said before. We have a vertebral foramina, which is what triangular in shape, as compared to thoracic vertebrae that is circular in shape. This one is obvious and this triangle. We can see our three sides of the triangle. We have the pedicle, which extends from the body backwards. We have the lamina. This is our lumbar vertebrae lamina. We have the lamina, which is directed posterior and medially. We have our superior 
articular process, which has superior articular chases that is directed posterior and medially. We also have a, that also have what, an inferior or an articular facet that is directed forward and laterally. Then we have our spinous process that is quadrangular. We have our transverse process that is what tapering and short. It is tapering and short. Again, our body, vertebral foramen, pedicle, lamina, spinous process, superior articular process, inferior articular process, transverse process. Now, one characteristic feature of the lumbar vertebrae is the presence of accessory and mammillary process. So accessory process is related to the transverse process. As you can see this elevation. So this is a rough elevation on the transverse process and this is known as the accessory process. And posterior to the superior articular process is our mammillary process. Mammillary process. So this is our mammillary process. This is our accessory process. So those are the features of the lumbar vertebrae. There are several attachments on the lumbar vertebrae. However, there are some major common ones we look forward to because those are like the ones that are often asked in steeplechase questions. As you can see, I've already painted this place. It is a very obvious attachment and it is very or oh, it is an often asked question in steeplechase. And this part that I paint, it gives attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament. In fact, all vertebrae generally, and if they should paint this area of the cervical or the thoracic vertebrae, it gives attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament. So the anterior part of the body of the lumbar vertebrae gives attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament. Then posterior part, I will, I'm able to paint this part properly. Just as the anterior, we have anterior longitudinal ligament. Posterior to we have both posterior longitudinal ligament. So anterior part give rise to anterior, give attachment to anterior longitudinal ligament. Posterior give attachment to posterior longitudinal ligament. Then also on the anterior part of the body, but just immediately beside the anterior longitudinal ligament, we have our cruise of diaphragm, the cruise of the diaphragm. So let me say this is my right side and this is my left side. So the cruise of the diaphragm attaches on the anterior part of the lumbar vertebrae. Yes. Now, the way it is attached, we have right cruise of diaphragm. The right cruise of diaphragm attached on L1, L2, L3. So the right cruise of diaphragm does not extend beyond L3 vertebrae. It does not extend beyond it. So let's say, for instance, this is L3. L4 is not going to have this attachment on it. However, if it is asked in a steeplechase question, they will most likely state that, provided this is L3 vertebrae, give or name this structure, right? So this is our right cruise of the diaphragm. On the other hand, the left cruise of the diaphragm is attached to L1, L2 vertebrae. It does not reach L3. So right, right cruise L1, L2, L3, left cruise L1 and L2. Again, anterior longitudinal ligament, right cruise of diaphragm, left cruise of diaphragm, posterior longitudinal ligament. Now, the spinal spaces just beside it, it gives attachment to two muscles. We have multifundus on the inside and erector spinae on the outside. So if we draw a curve here, multifundus is like inside the hole that my hand is forming, right? So multifundus inside, erector spinae outside. So that's what the spinal process give rise to. Then to our lamina, the lamina of our lumbar vertebrae, each adjacent or adjacent lamina, they, they give attachment to ligamentum flava. So if there was another lumbar vertebrae on top of this one, so adjacent lamina is going to give attachment to ligamentum flavae. Yes, so we also have our thoracolumbar fascia. So our columbar fascia has three layers, the posterior layer, the middle layer, and the anterior layer. Posterior, middle, or, and anterior, or you can simply say anterior, middle, and posterior, taking it from front to back. But since I'm on the posterior aspect, I say posterior, 
may do an anterior. Now the the posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia is attached on the spinous process. This painting that I painted, or this marker painting, is attachment for the posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. The middle layer is attached to the tip of transverse process. So the middle layer attached to the tip of transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae, while the anterior layer is attached to this ridge of the transverse process. So let's go over the layers of the thoracolumbar fascia. Posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia, middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia, and anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia. Then in front of the thoracolumbar of, of the anterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia, we have our psoas major. Behind the anterior layer and in front of the middle layer, so in between middle layer and anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia, we have our quadratus lamborum muscle. So if this area was painted, right, it is our quadratus lamborum. If this area was painted, it is our swas major. If this area was painted, it is our erector spinae and multifundus. The tip of spinous process is the posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia. Tip of transverse process is the middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia. The region of the transverse process is the what? anterior layer of the columbar fascia. Yes, now to um, specific attachment to some of the lumbar vertebrae, like L1 for instance. If this was a L1 lumbar vertebrae, the tip of the transverse process will give attachment to the medial and lateral accurate ligaments. Again, if this was the L1 lumbar vertebrae, the tip of the transverse process is going to give attachment to the medial and lateral accurate ligament. And if this was the L5 lumbar vertebrae, the tip of the transverse process is going to give, rise, give attachment for ilio lumbar ligament. So in case it is specifically stated that, okay, this is the L1 vertebrae in this triple chase question, and the tip of the transverse process is painted, and it says, Leads the structures attached to this area. We should know that it is what the middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia, as well as medial and lateral accurate was ligament. But if it was L5, we will know that okay, it is the middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia, as well as iliolumbar ligament, right? Yes. So let's go over the attachment of the lumbar vertebrae again. Anterior longitudinal ligaments, right screws of diaphragm L1, L2, L3, left screws of diaphragm L1, L2, posterior longitudinal ligaments, adjacent lamina give, give attachment to ligamentum flava, the tip of spinal process give attachment to posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia, tip of transverse process give attachment to middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia, then the ridge on the anterior part of the transverse process give rise to, give attachment to anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia. Now this area can be painted, as you can see, this area is painted red and this area is not painted, so red and not painted. In a steeple chest question, the, the peripheral area can be painted, not the center. So whenever this peripheral area is painted, and they ask that what structure is attached to this area. It is our annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc. Annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc. But if this area is painted, or is painted here, yes, just as it is now, it is our nucleus propulsus of the intervertebral disc. So in the center, nucleus propulsus, at the periphery or edges, annulus fibrosis. So that is basically all for the lumbar vertebrae. Thank you very much and see you next time.